Jane, right now. In the video one studio with us today, Jane Weedland. Hi, Jane. Hi, Richard. You've got a new album out. Mm -hmm. It's, in fact, your first solo album. Yep. And uh, tell me a little about the album. We're going to talk with you throughout the week about your career with the Go-Go's and now with a solo career. But tell me a little about the album. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, um, I recorded it all this summer, and, gosh, the first single's called Blue Kiss, and I worked with... Um, four different producers, which was less complicated than it sounds. <laughs> was it nerve-wracking before you sat down to do the album? Because here it is, it's, it's Jane Weedland. You're, you're out on your own now. Yeah, a little bit. Once I got in the studio, I felt good. I felt real comfortable because, you know, I'm old pro at recording, so right. I felt fine once I was working on it, but the before time was a little tough. But you're also an old pro at writing. Maybe mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize that, but uh, the songs that the Go-Go's did and the songs in your album, a lot of them were written by you. Uh -huh. uh, you weren't just doing cover versions. You weren't like the Monkees or something doing other <laughs> people's songs. Right. Did you actually write these songs differently because now they were for you as the individual artist? Mm, not really. I think my start writing style has sort of remained the same, but um, with using different musicians, I think it gave the songs a whole other sound. Right. That could actually shape the, the sound for you. Right. Was there any moments of decision where you had to say, okay, I've got 20 songs I've written and only a certain amount can get on the album? Sure, yeah. I had 30 songs. You had 30 songs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was pretty easy to decide, though. The real good ones sort of stood out, and my producers helped me choose, too. And that's where the first single came from as well. Right. What, would have, what were your other choices for the first single before Blue Kiss? Hmm, probably Modern Romance. Is that going to be a single later on? I think so, yeah. Okay, well, let's check out your first video right now. We'll talk okay. to you throughout the week about the Go-Go's and, of course, your upcoming very big solo career. I know it's, <laughs> it's going to take off, but would you like to introduce Thanks. your first video? Yeah, this is my first solo video, and it's called Blue Kiss. <laughs> All this week is Jane Weedland. This is Jane's current album. And Jane, this is also your first album as a solo artist. Yeah. But your history goes back. This is Jane's current album. And Jane, this is also your first album as a solo artist. Yeah. But your history goes back way before this album, right? Yep. It goes back to, was it 78 that the girls first got together? Uh -huh. We're talking about the Go-Go's. Now, legend has it that when the Go-Go's formed, you couldn't play your instruments. You just wanted to be in a band. Is that correct? Yes, it's true. Wasn't that a bit nerve-wracking, just getting together and saying, let's form a band? <laughs> no, actually, um, it took a lot of the pressure off knowing that we didn't know anything. We had absolutely nothing to lose. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's kind of a unique approach because normally you hear about uh, the bands getting together, some guy plays lead guitar and he finds a bass guitarist and advertises in the press for a drum and a singer comes along. How did you allocate who was going to play what instruments? Um, I don't know. I think everyone just chose what they wanted to play. I actually did want to be the lead singer, but Belinda had already chosen that. So I said, okay, well, I'll play guitar. So that was that. How about writing the songs? Um, at the beginning, everybody wrote, and then after a while, I think certain members lost interest or whatever, and I continued to really enjoy writing, and um, in fact, that's the thing I like best about the whole deal, is the writing. The writing? Yeah. How about the performing? That's fun. But the writing is... Some... The writing is, it feels the best. I mean, it's the most fulfilling. A lot of people say it's almost like giving birth. You have this blank piece of paper in front of you, and you have an idea in your head, and then to be able to transfer an idea, a concept, onto the paper is mm -hmm. really something very special. Yeah, it is. And each song is like a little baby. Yeah. <laughs> each one is very special to you. Yeah, definitely. In the early days of the Go-Go's, uh, you wrote a lot of the hits, including uh, the video we're about to show, Our Lips Are Sealed. Yeah. Were you surprised at how quickly it became accepted and, and the response that the Go-Go's had? Well, no, because we worked for three years before we even made an album. And then um, the album took uh, ages. It was one of the slowest rising albums ever on the history of the Billboard charts. So, yeah, we actually made it. As some, that was some sort of statement, I guess. It's like a reverse honor, right? Yeah, right. But it was good because our career built and we toured and toured. and. So it wasn't as overnight as it might have seemed to some people. Well, we'll talk about that building career and the touring tomorrow, but right now let's check out that video for our lips to seal. Okay. Here's the Go-Go's. Okay. 
Good night, and Video One will be right back. With us in the Video One studio, and Jane, we're going to be playing Blue Kiss tomorrow, but right now we'd like to play a video from the final Go-Go's album, mm -hmm. Talk Show. But before we get into that, let's get into the cover of the Rolling Stone. Okay. They were twice on the cover. How was that for you? Oh, it was exciting. Yeah? Yeah. Did you ever dream when you first got together in 78 that you could maybe one day make the cover of the Rolling Stone? I think it's something we talked about, but when it finally happened, it sure was a big deal. And Especially the underwear shot cover. Because it was so controversial. But it wasn't rude. I mean, it was controversial no, it was in a cute. nice way. Right? Yeah, it was very clean cut controversy. <laughs> and then, of course, there was the world tours. There was Japan. Uh -huh. How was that to uh, go and play in Japan? Very exciting and much different than anywhere else in the world. I remember seeing you in concert in the Arlington Theatre in oh, yeah. Santa Barbara, I think 1981. Uh -huh. And uh, though the Go Go's were still relatively new to the people, your album was still doing its long climb up the charts right. it was almost like watching a greatest hit show there was so much energy from the girls on stage did you get that same energy coming back from the audience oh yeah i think the, the crazier the audience went the crazier we'd go it was very exciting so the two of you almost fed on the the energy right the oh, band yeah. and the audience yeah then there came out a staggering st sales statistic that mm -hmm. you became the biggest selling female group of all time, passing the Supremes. Was there a moment when you all sat down, looked at each other and said, how can this be? <laughs> I think when somebody told us we had gone number one, it was just so shocking and, and so exciting. It was, w w was there ever a moment that you wished they wouldn't say that you're an all-girls group? I mean, it's obvious that you were an all-girls group, but did you ever feel we're being unfairly categorized? Why can't we just be a group making music? Yeah, I think we thought that all the time. And we probably worried about it too much. We just should have enjoyed it for what it was. But a little later on in your, the career, you decided to leave the band, leave the Go-Go's. Mm -hmm. Why was that? Why was your decision to, to leave the Go-Go's before they split? Well, um, the, I was in the band for seven years, and that seemed like plenty of time, and I'd had a great time of it and loved the girls and everything, but I just felt like it was time to try something new. And I, of course, wanted to sing my own songs. Well, we'll be looking at one of your videos tomorrow and uh, seeing you singing one of your own songs, Blue Kiss. But right now, let's play a video from the final Go-Go's album, which is Talk Show. Right. And this is Head Over Heels. Okay. Jane Wheatland is still with us here in the Video One control room, and Jane, your album is in my hand, appropriately yes. titled Jane Wheatland, right? Strangely enough. Right. A good title <laughs> for your first solo album. Now, we've been talking about your history with the Go-Go's mm -hmm. and the early days of performing. Now, when you first took to the stage, it was the late 70s. The place was Los Angeles, and there was kind of a punk boom going on, right? Yeah. Bands like Black Flag were taking off. Uh, Adam and the Ants was uh, about to come to town for the first time. Uh -huh. How was it for five girls on stage? Well, it was a lot of fun, and people thought we were very wild. We didn't, uh, we were the same girls, but we didn't have that rec reputation as being America's sweethearts like we later earned. At first, people thought we were real weird and dressed funny and stuff, and then a couple of years later, it all came into style, and we were, you know, the next big thing. In fact, your look with the cut-off t-shirts and sweats predated Flashdance oh, by yeah. a couple of years. Ooh, Belinda used to get mad at that, that Flashdance got all the credit for that. <laughs> yeah, because you girls certainly had it. Yeah. <laughs> was, was the uh, critical reaction okay back then? Because, I mean, how long did it take you to get the label from <clears throat> when you first did your performances? Well, it was three years to get the record deal. And um, I think we were mostly popular with the kids right from the start. The critics kind of wondered what all the hoopla was about, and the record companies didn't want to know. And luckily, IRS was the company to take a chance on us. And Did you ever get any flack from the critics? Because here you are admitting that you, at the beginning, couldn't play your instruments. You're literally learning as you're going along. Did the critics ever say, well, these girls haven't got a chance? <laughs> Well, I don't think, most critics weren't paying a whole lot of attention to us in those days because it just was, um, it was too ludicrous to even be worth their while, so. Well, tomorrow I'm going to talk about being the biggest selling female group of all time, the cover of the Rolling Stone. Twice. <laughs> Twice. 
and a lot more incredible milestones that you've achieved. But right now, let's play another video from the Go-Go's. Okay. Yeah, this one is Vacation. Okay. This week, we've been talking with Jane Wheedlin, formerly of the Go-Go's, and now with a solo album out. But Jane, before this solo album, yeah. there was another project <laughs> outside of the Go-Go's with two of my favorite people, Ron and Russell Mayo. Uh-huh cool places. My notorious liaison. <laughs> yeah, how did that come about? Um, we joined their fan club and um, told Ron and Russell what a big fan I had always been of them personally and Russell wrote back and asked me if I'd sing a duet with them and I never dreamed that it would be a single you know for Sparks but it just turned out so well that everyone said this is a hit and so we did the video and I even went on tour with them. How long were you on tour with them? Oh gosh. I suppose about a month or something. I interviewed uh, Russell at one time and he said that he was going to have a flight case built for you with some small holes he could <laughs> feed you through. <laughs> are, they, are the band Sparks as crazy as they seem? More crazy. <laughs> yeah. At one time in England they were a huge band. Back yeah. in 1973 and 74 they had a, a series of top ten hits. Uh -huh. Were you aware of their material prior to um, joining their fan club? Oh yeah, that's when I liked them, is when they were popular in England. I just accidentally found out about them. I was looking through some records and I saw this amazing cover for Kimono My House and thought these guys have got to be wonderful and took the record home and fell madly in love. Are there any other bands or artists that you'd like to do a duet with? Says he, putting her on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, sure. I would like to do a duet with Paul Young. <laughs> Paul Young. Yeah, or how about Brian Ferry? Or how about David Bowie? <laughs> so, uh, you know, any number of people, sure. Mr. Young, Mr. Ferry, Mr. Bowie, uh, <laughs> send your applications via video one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at the duet you did with Ron and Russell okay. right now. Would you like to introduce it? Sure, yeah. This is um, Cool Places by me and Spock. 